Hi, if you're in the market for a fridge freezer and you're not really sure what to go for, then you're not on your own because there's a huge range to choose from. So what I've done is I've come up with 10 things to consider before buying a fridge freezer. This video is assuming that you're looking for a freestanding fridge freezer, like these guys. If you're looking for an integrated fridge freezer, I have done a separate buying guide, which I just posted above here. Just before we start, all I'd normally say is please subscribe to my YouTube channel, just give us a quick thumbs up. What I do is I talk about household appliances, I do specialise in things like quarters, vacuums, and there's normally a bit of tech in there as well. So just give us a quick subscribe, I'd really appreciate that, and then we'll make a start. Although this list is in no particular order, I think what I've done is I've tried to put them in some kind of order in what most customers would be thinking about when it comes to the buying pattern of a fresh freezer. And the first one is the dimensions of the product. Now this is critical really. Uh, if you've got certain space for it to fit in, then you need to measure up to make sure it's going to fit in. Size-wise of appliances do vary a huge amount. Uh, a lot of customers just come in and go, well, it's just a standard size. Well, no, there isn't really a standard size. Dimensions tend to start around the 50 centimeter mark, which is quite slim nowadays, or around 19 and a half inches. Uh, then they tend to go up to 55 centimeters, like this Becco one here, or 21 and a half inches. Uh, 23 and a half inch wide, or 60 centimeters. Uh, which, I mean, that's by far the most popular size, especially that we sell now. Uh, and then you can go into the realms of the wider models, so 70, 80 centimetres, and even to the very wide American style. So it's just really to have a measure, uh, because the width is the main thing that people tend to look at. And then, of course, you've got the height. Uh, what you'll also find is that clearly the height of the appliance is going to be crucial. Sometimes it could be that you've got either a cupboard or shelf above it, also, we do find some customers, especially if you, if you are quite small, then do you want a huge fridge freezer that's say 1800 or two meters high that you're gonna to struggle to get onto the top shelf? So that's something really to consider. Uh, also the depth of the appliance. Um, I know quite a few people don't really think about the depth, so front to back, because uh, what you can find is when you open a fridge freezer, uh, depending on where it's located, if you've got drawers the other side or if you've got furniture the other side, then that could have an impact how the door could open, especially if it's got a handle like this. While I'm talking about the dimensions of the product, I will also cover the interior dimensions to look at, or the capacity as it's more commonly known. Uh, this will be the space inside, so it's how much you can get in there. So you've got the fridge and then normally the freezer at the bottom. So just have a look at the capacity of each section uh, compared to other models that you're looking at buying. Uh, this can be quite easily be seen on the energy labels. First of all, I'm not really sure why I've got two different energy si size of energy labels. Uh, I think whoever's printed this one has uh, gone a, a, bit, a bit silly on it. But anyway, you can see here at the bottom, you have got the capacity at 77 litres in the freezer and 143 litres. This is for the for the little Becco one. And it is a come out of the Samsung, 114 litres and 230 litres for the fridge. So just have a look at the capacities, because what you will find is that they do vary a huge amount. Uh, and sometimes, even though you've got the same external dimensions, some brands are really good at the way they put the insulation in. And what I mean by that is, although you've got the same external dimensions, you might have more capacity on the inside because the insulation that they use is better. So number two in the list, and I suppose the next common thing that people ask, is the colour of the appliance. Uh, as with a lot of appliances nowadays, they're available in quite a few different colours. I suppose we've got the two most popular colours here, so we've got white and the silver. When it comes to the silver, uh, again, there are different shades of silver. Uh, so you've got this, uh, which is like a, a fingerprint free, which goes down really well. Uh, this type of finish is very popular because, especially if you've got young kids uh, coming to open the fridge and get something out, then last thing you want is greasy fingerprints on there. Uh, but with these, it's nice and easy to keep clean. Uh, you've also got things like proper stainless steel. Uh, clearly with a full stainless steel, uh, it's normally a bit more expensive, but they do look really smart. Uh, but when it comes to the stainless, they're, uh, I suppose, quite difficult to keep clean. Uh, but you know if you're rigorous and if you're really good at keeping these things clean then they can look really nice um, As I say there's a huge range of uh, colors. You've got other things like black some brands offer multicolored appliances uh, the yellows orange greens uh, Some brands even offer an option to change the front of your fridge freezer You can actually buy different fittings to go on 
Number three on the list, and again a really important factor to decide, is do you want it to be frost free? Now a lot of people think it's a no-brainer to have a frost free one. Now it, I suppose the main advantage of having a frost free appliance is you don't have the hassle of defrosting it, as it says frost free. Uh, different brands will call it different things. Uh, some will call it frost free, some will call it no frost. Uh, there's quite a few different names that people tend to use. Uh, there is also something called low frost. So it's not no frost, it's low frost. Uh, and with that, it doesn't mean it's frost free, uh, but what it does mean is you still have to defrost it. Sometimes it could be, say, once a year or once every couple of years. Uh, but the main advantage of a no frost fridge freezer is that it's a lot more energy efficient. Now, I'll cover energy efficiency in a moment. Um, but what you will find is that with a no frost appliance, as I say, it is more energy efficient and also you do gain capacity. Because one downside of a frost refrigerator is that it does consume more electricity. And the key you can find is when you have a look in the freezer, the bottom drawer is normally a little bit slimmer. Uh, so normally on a frost free appliance, so that's the, the middle shelf and you compare the bottom one. Uh, now that's pretty standard, that the dimensions, so the, the drawers are a different size, that's pretty standard on any fridge freezer, but it's quite a bit more noticeable on a frost-free appliance. If you are torn between a frost-free and a low-frost appliance, then have a look at the capacities of the freezer on both appliances. Because what you can find sometimes that the capacity on the low-frost appliance is actually quite a bit bigger. So although the benefit of frost free is a huge benefit for a lot of people sometimes if you know if you are limited for space and if you want extra capacity in the freezer then you could find going for the low frost option could be a better option number four on the list and again it's something that's really important in when you're deciding to buy a fridge freezer is the energy rating of it because what this will do is this will tell you how much it's going to cost you over a year to run it uh, with a lot of appliances things like washing machines tumble dryers clearly it will vary on the running cost annually depending on how many uses you have of it. With a fridge freezer it's slightly different because it's plugged in and been used all the time then I'd say this is actually probably a little bit more important. So these are again the different size energy labels of these two appliances. Uh, and what it will do first of all it shows you the energy letter that you got on here. Back in March 2021 uh, the energy ratings were all changed so whereas a lot of manufacturers are into the realms of a plus and a double plus a triple plus that they're all up here um, give it a, a year a couple of years ago uh, but what happened is that the they were told to rejig the whole system uh, so this is where we are at at the moment i'm sure over the next couple of years then a lot of manufacturers will get back up to the the b's and a's uh, but what you'll find is this just gives you a good indicator as to the running cost of the appliance so this is the figure to look at 274 kilowatt hours per annum it's quite easy to work out as to the annual running cost of the appliance. If you know how much a kilowatt hour of energy is going to cost you, then just times it by that. So at the moment, uh, I mean, in the UK, we're probably looking at around 20 pence per kilowatt hour. Uh, so in a nutshell, that will cost you around 54 pound a year to run. Uh, and as far as this one, so on the Samsung one, you're looking around 50 pound. So over a year, uh, again, there's not a huge difference. And what it can do, it can make a huge difference as to how long you keep the freezer door open. Uh, if you're one of these people that when you load the shopping, if you've got this open for five, 10 minutes while you're loading it, that's a huge difference because what that means is that the unit has got to work a lot harder to get back down to temperature. So the, there's quite a lot of factors when, when it comes to the running costs, but at least these give you a, a good indicator as to how much they will cost to run. Number five, and it's something that not many people think about, is the ambient temperature of the room the fridge freezer is going to be located in. Now this is something that can be a little bit controversial. Uh, I suppose a lot of people have had fridges, freezers and fridge freezers in garages and outhouses for years and they've not had any issues. And then suddenly they come to go and buy a new one and it's a talking point. Uh, so what we tend to do, we try and ask people well, we do make sure we ask people where it's going to be located. Now, the reason this is an issue because a lot of manufacturers have an ambient temperature that the appliance can sit at. Normally, it's say between 10 and 20 degrees. 
Uh, have a look in the manufacturer's instructions because for every model it will vary. Some brands, like Beko and sister company Blomberg, can go down to minus 15. And I suppose for these guys, that's quite a big selling point. That can be a huge advantage going for some brands where it can go down to minus 15 because what will happen is if you buy certain brands, if you put it out in a garage and if it goes wrong, you ring the manufacturer, then sometimes they might not call out because the ambient temperature of the room is too cold. And what will happen is the unit thinks it's cold enough and just switches off. So it's not necessarily that it's faulty because if you moved it into a warmer room, then it would just turn back on. Number six on the list, do you want the fridge freezer to have things like an ice dispenser or a drinks dispenser on the front? Uh, unfortunately, I've not got one here to show you at the moment, uh, which is a bit annoying because I really wanted to show you uh, what it looks like. Not so much from the outside, because most people know what it looks like from the outside, but from the inside. Now, I know a lot of people will look at these and go, well, you know, it's really nice to have, you know, really cold water uh, on tap, because clearly when it's in the fridge, you just pop your glass underneath and you go and get your either your cold water or your ice cubes, whichever. Now, that's really good, especially during the summer. The main downside to these is the space it takes up on the inside. Now, I suppose you've got two options. You've got the stored water where it's stored in the door. And what will happen is that on the inside here, you'll have quite a big container and that's where you fill the water up. And you'll normally have some kind of filter in there as well that you'd need to maintain. Um, but if you have one where you've got stored water in the door, then that takes up a lot of space. So just have a look at that because sometimes it can be quite annoying, especially if you're not gonna use that option very often for the water on the outside. The other option is a plumbed appliance, uh, and that's where the fridge freezer is connected to the water supply. Uh, that can have quite an advantage as far as the water in the door, because you're not storing the water, uh, it's just feeding from your water supply. So that's normally quite an advantage, but it does mean that you need to get it connected in the first place. And I suppose, again, depending on where it is, it could be a pain getting a water supply to it. Number seven on the list is the internals of the fridge and the freezer. And what I mean by this, well, sometimes they call it furniture um, inside, so you've got things like the shelves and things like the racks and the bottle holders in the door. Uh, sometimes you get these, the cheeky little egg trays. Um, but just have a look inside to see what they've got to offer. Uh, some of them will have adjustable shelves. Most of the time they're glass shelves now in the fridge. And it's normally safety glass just to avoid them getting broken. Uh, you've also got things like this sometimes. So you've got what they call humidity fresh. And this can really help to keep fruit and vegetables fresh for longer. Uh, that can be a huge benefit. Uh, also in here, so within some of these appliances, again, you've got the adjustable shelves, so you can take these out to clean. Uh, but what you will find is that sometimes the, the drawers themselves can vary. So a lot of them have drawers now. It's normally something I'd recommend. Some manufacturers are reverted back to the, the flap on the front. Um, I'm not a huge fan of those in the freezer because you do find over time that normally they do break off or crack. They're not normally that great. Uh, also, some brands just have a shelf in there uh, as opposed to a proper drawer. Again, I'm not a huge fan because it just makes it a little bit more difficult. Uh, little things like the handles on the side. Uh, if you got it full of full of frozen food, then that can make a difference, just makes it a bit easier. Also, just to add to that, is the lighting inside. Uh, a lot of fridge freezers will use LED lighting now, which is a much better way of doing things, rather than having the old fashioned, say, 10 or 15 watt screwing ball, and they were never that reliable. So just have a look at the lighting inside. Uh, most of the time, if you go onto the manufacturer's websites, they do normally have images of how well it's lit. Uh, some brands will just have one bulb in there, some brands even have strips of LEDs at the top or at the bottom. And again, that can make it look really good and it can make it a lot easier when you're looking for something in the fridge. Number eight on the list, does the appliance have a door alarm? Now, I know for some people you're thinking, well, it's not really that important. You know, I suppose that's why it's way down the list. Uh, but for other people, if you've left your door open before, then you'll know how important this is. What a door alarm will do is it will actually tell you it's normally an audible sound to let you know when the fridge or the freezer door has been left open. Now normally it's, say the kids have gone to get say an ice cream from the freezer and they've not quite shut it properly. So if you've opened it and if they just shut it and if it just left the jar a little bit, then that can have quite an impact on it. 
Uh, I must admit, at home, personally, we have had it, where the uh, the freezer door was left open a little bit, and because we didn't use it for, say, several days, then a lot of the food inside had completely defrosted, and it just has to be thrown away. It is an accident, these things happen, but sometimes, when you're looking at these things, had I got a door alarm on there, then that would have alerted me that the freezer door is open, and it would save me having to buy a lot more food. Number nine in the list is the warranty of the appliance. Have a look at this, because it's something that doesn't really get talked about a huge amount. Uh, and the reason I think it's quite important is because there are very few local engineers that do repairs on refrigeration appliances. And what this means is that if it goes wrong, say if you've got a 12 month guarantee, and if it goes wrong after two and a half years, then really, you know, it should be able to be repaired. But what you'd need to do is you'd need to call the manufacturer out to come and get that sorted and that can be quite an expensive repair. So if you've got a fridge freezer with a better warranty to start with, then hopefully that should be covered. Number 10 on the list, and again, for a lot of people it's a really important factor, is the cost of the appliance. Uh, I know I've talked a lot about the features and benefits and sizes and things, but for some people, the cost could be number one, and they're not really bothered what color it is, what size it is, cost is number one. And if that's the case, then just have a look around because prices do vary a huge amount. Uh, but what I try to say, don't always just go for the cheapest because it's the cheapest, because there could be other factors in there, things like the running cost, uh, things like the, the capacity of the fridges and freezers uh, that could vary a little bit and sometimes by spending a little bit more can make a huge difference to you. I hope you found it useful on the 10 things to consider before buying a fridge freezer. Now, I know there are probably other things that I've not mentioned. Uh, I mean, to be honest, with free trees, there's actually quite a lot to talk about. Uh, but all I'd normally say is please subscribe to my YouTube channel. Just give us a quick thumbs up, click subscribe, and leave any comments below. I do always ask for comments, whether it's good or bad about the video. Let me know what you honestly thought about it. And if I have missed something, again, just pop it in the comments, because uh, I do use all this feedback for future videos. Also, if you have got any questions on any of the fridge freezers or any of the features or benefits, uh, things that I've mentioned, then again, just pop it in the comments and I'll get back to you. Thanks for watching.